Good morning. We'll learn, we're learning Masechus uh, Eruvin, uh, Perak the fourth chapter. The name of the chapter is Misho Itziu, and uh, we are starting page 46. And we'll start from the top. Page 46 from the top. So that last part was the Gemara said from the learning of, of yesterday certainly not be permissible to carry the water even in the Tchum of its eventual owner the Avalu Neilo Dasiri which would be Neilo then prohibited the handle at all on Yom Tov. So we spoke previously about the concept of Neilo something that was become available edible uh, okay, sir. Okay, so on Yom Tov. When the water falls from the sky, it, it didn't exist before then, so therefore it's like the egg, so you can't carry it. Okay, now I got it. So the Gemara therefore rejects this, the notion that rain in vapor form is not considered to okay. exist. Now we're going the other way. And explain that the vice is based on a different principle. Ela mayo beovim may not naide. The water in the clouds is constantly in motion. And therefore does not receive a trum limit until it comes to a halt. Until it comes to a halt. Yeah. Now that you have come to understand this principle. The water was in the ocean at the start of Yom Tov. You also should have no difficulty. The water in the ocean is also constantly in motion. Never acquires residence there. Tanya, it was taught in a baiso. No, it's a meshkin, a mayonis, a noivin. Water of flowing streams and gushing springs. Ari and Kiragli Chol Odom are treated like the feet of anyone. They receive the Techum of whoever eventually owns them, since they were in motion when the Shabbos or Yom Tov begun. They acquired no residence of their own. Who grants a sleeping person a trum of 2,000 Amis. Did you hear Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi makes this state, statement explicitly? Or did you hear, or did you deduce, deduce it from a general principle, I heard it explicitly, my Lord, from what general principle of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi could Rabbi Yaakov ben Idi have established that the Allah follows Rabbi Yeshua ben Uri? The Omar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Allah follows the opinion of the one who rules leniently in disputes involving the laws of Eruvin. Now, since Rabbi Yochoban Uri had the more lenient position in the Mishnah, the principle would have established the Allah according to his view. And why do I need two statements of Rabbi Yochoban Levi? The explicit ruling and the general principle to establish the Allah according to Rabbi Yochoban Uri's view. Omar Rabbi Zeira Tzeriche, they are both needed. The Yashmin Allah Rabbi Yochoban Uri. If you would say that Allah follows Rabbi Yochum Benu, Rabbi Amin Abin Lekul Abin Lechum, I might have said Rabbi Yochum Benu opinions is followed, whether it results in leniency or or it results in a stringency. Kamash Mona Rabbi Shobun Levi therefore informs us Halacha Kedur Amaker Beiru that we follow the Halacha in the case in the cases of Eiru we follow the Maker the more lenient opinion. <coughs> that what that a, a sleeping person. We accept Rabbi Yochum Benu's opinion only to grant a tchum area to a sleeping person, but not to restrict ownerless object to their own tchum. 
Relaim Aloch Gid Rameke Beiru, the Aloch of Pharaoh is the opinion of the one who rules leniently in disputes involving a Ruvin. Aloch Gid Rameke Beiru, why do I need to be told explicitly that the Aloch of Pharaoh is the opinion of Beiru Benuri in the case of a sleeping person? Itzrich. The ruling is also necessary. We had been told the general principle. I might have, con- it might have occurred to you to say that this principle applies only when an individual Tana disagrees with another individual Tana. Verabi Mokim Rabbi, or many Tanoim disagree with many other Tanaim. Aval Yochid Mokim Yochid, but. However, when a dispute involves an individual against many, a Maloi, I would say that the general principle of following the lenient opinion in matters of Yeruvin does not apply. It was therefore necessary for Yeshua ben Levi to state, in this case specifically, the Allah of Allah of Yeruvin Benuri, though he is a minority opinion. Amor l'Rav l'Abai Mikdi Yeruvin d'Rabbon the laws of Iruvin are rabbinic in origin. What does this, what does it, what does it matter to me if it is a dispute involving individual against other individuals or individuals against many? It's one individual against another or it's one individual against many. In either case, the law should follow the lenient opinion. Since the law of Eruvin is not biblical in origin, why then was it necessary to state here that the law follows of Yerachim Benuri? It is true that in rabbinic matters we do not distinguish between disputes involving an individual against an individual. And those involving individual against many. But now, any woman who has passed through three periods without men, menstruating, it is enough for her to be considered a nida from that moment, from the time she menstruates, and she is not subject to the usual rabbinical decree, which treats as tome. Anything a nida touched twenty four hours before she menstruated. She menstruated. So dial shot. So by the time she become nida, she become nida. There's no. We don't say oh she was nida before because it takes her so three months to become. Tanya myself also Rabbi Kabbalozo. So what's happened? And Rabbi acted according to the opinion of Kabbalozo. He ruled that food she had touched within the previous twenty four hours were not tummy. But after Rabbi remembered that the law does not follow Rabbi opinion, Omar Kedayu Rabbi Lozo Lismur Shatchak. He said, You know what? Although I was passing like Rabbi Lozo, and Allah doesn't follow Rabbi Lozo, but we can rely on Rabbi Lozo in the time of Tchak, in the time of uh, time of emergency. Rabbi let his earlier ruling stand because it was a time of famine. So time of famine, you can't now rule that all the things that she touched are uh, forbidden 24 hours before. Because what's the whole idea? It's like a retroactive tumor saying, okay, if she become nida now, so everything that pure food that she touched yesterday for, for the last 24 hours becomes tummy. Right. But this specific woman doesn't have a period. It takes her three months to get a she period. She doesn't have a period. She's getting close to menopause, maybe. Or, or, she, or she has a different kind of system. Yeah. Everybody has a different right. system. Everybody's different. True. So he ruled like Rabbi Lozo, that every that uh, things that she touches not Tom. And they told, he remembered that Allah doesn't follow Rabbi Lozo. So he said, okay, I can rely on him in the time of emergency because it's a famine. They didn't want to rule all the food that was tummy, making everything she touched for the last 24 hours tummy. What is the meaning after he remembered? Maybe he remembered the Allah doesn't follow Rabbi Lozo, but rather follow the rabbis who retroactively rendered tummy anything she touched 
even in this case, even in a case of a three months, uh, oh, you know, three. Yeah. Well, she passed, I don't know if it's three months, but passes three periods, period, three cycle, cycles. She passed cycle without, was, without yeah. menstruating. Right, whatever the cycle was. So, Bishas atchak echi So, if Allah doesn't follow him, what does it mean in time of emergency, I follow Rabbi Lassam? He's more medical, so, you know, you don't have... A, a no, so the Gemara wants to know, if, if it's, if it's, uh, if Allah is not like him, there's no... Doesn't make a difference. Ella Deloit Ma'aloch Lokar Blos Lokar Bon says rather really what he remembered was that it's not the Alocha follows the rabbis. It says Alocha was not Kar Blos and not Kar Bon. Lachar Shenizkar the Lav Yochit Poli Galei after the Rebbe remembered it is not merely an individual who disagreed with Rabbi Lazar. Ella Rabbi Poli Galei he saw that a lot of rabbis he remembered that a lot of rabbis who disagreed with with him. Omar Kedar Blos Machosh Alchak he said. Abulazar is worthy enough to be relied upon in in a in times of emergency. So we see that even regarding a binnacle clause, such as the law which ret retroactively renders Tama anything touched by a woman in the twenty four hours preceding her menstruation, the rule is to follow the majority opinion, as Rabbi would have done. He remembered the opinion of the majority. And had it not been an emergency situation, he would have not ruled that. Not, so now this challenges, or he would we would say that everything is Tama now, even though he ruled that it's not. This challenges of his assertion that in rabbinic matters the law follows the lenient opinion, even when it is minority opinion. That's obviously a challenge. You see that the law is not following the minority, even if it's lenient opinion and it's rabbinical. Uh, enactment. Amar Rav Meshoshal Rava. So Rav Meshoshaya said to Rava, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Rava. Some say it was Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak who said it to Rava. Uve the Rabbonon loishoni ben Yochid b'mokim Yochid uven Yochid b'mokim Rabim. In rabbinic matters, we do not distinguish between disputing disputes involved involving an individual against individual. And those involving individual against many. Over a current report of death in family, the laws of mourning are observed for seven and thirty days. And thirty days. Right. But over a delayed report. I was only one day. One day. What does it mean? Current and which one is considered delayed report? If it's within the 30 days of passing, is is close, is considered current. And after Shloishim, it's considered a Chayko, it's not considered current. And therefore, it would only mourn for one day. These are the words of Abekio Adir, Abekio Chomerim. It doesn't make a difference if it was current or after 30 days. It's still considered current and you have to... And you have to... Uh, yeah, 7 and 30. To observe the 7 and 30 days of morning. Wherever you find individual, individual ruling leniently, and many who dispute him and rule stringently. You follow the machmirim, you follow the many, follow the majority. Even though they rule stringently, except this one. Even though Rabbi Akiva is maker, Rabbi Akiva rules leniently to exempt the recipient of a delayed report for most of the mourning period. And the, the more numerous sages rule stringently. The law nevertheless follows the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. 
And Rabbi Yechonon held in this matter, like Shmuel, Domo Shmuel, Loch did make it, but Ovel. Shmuel said, when it comes to Ovel, we follow the more lenient opinion. Ravilus, the Akilu Rabbon, the rabbis were lenient in regards to uh, Avelus, to mourning, uh, which is Rabbi Yechonon and Shmuel, Aval Ba'alma, but in general, Afilu with the Rabbon, Shon, Ibn Yochid, and Mokim Yochid, Ibn Yochid, Mokim Rabbim, even rabbinic matters. We distinguish between disputes involving individual against individual and disputes involving individual against many. In the latter disputes, we follow the more general principle that the halacha is decided in favor of the many. This contradicts Rabbah's assertion. Rapapa Omar, Rapapa said, It's terich. It was necessary. It might have occurred to you to say, All of the above, this, the rule that we follow the lenient opinion, the lenient opinion in Eruvin, Eruvin cases, is only in cases involving Eruvin Chatseros. Try to make a common courtyard for a few houses that are sharing the same courtyard. I might say that this rule does not apply. In other words, that the laws of Yeruv Etchumim are in some ways treated differently from the laws of Yeruv Echatzeros. Right, because one is for the person, the other is for the arm. Am, not am, but for... For the, for the community, for the seaboard. No, but you talk about the one that rabbi makes for everyone, but there's also Yeruvah Chatzeros, just a few people sharing the same right, hotel, right. and they just want to walk. Uh, right, just in, like, you, look, in Brooklyn. Uh, in a building, even. If you, even in Brooklyn, it used to be us here to have an Arab rabbi. Yeah, but inside the building, you need to do Yeruvah right, Chatzeros. So they would have little ones for. What? I know what you're exactly, I'm agreeing with you. So the most of it is it is therefore necessary for Rabbi Yerucham ben Levi to state that the Allah follows Rabbi Yerucham ben Nuri. So the Gemara explains the reason for assuming that Yeruvi Tchumim are treated differently than Yeruvi Chatzeros. So Menatim, what is shown in the Yeruvi Chatzeros, Yeruvi Tchumim, from where do do you see that we differentiate between Yeruvi Chatzeros and Yeruvi Tchumim? When was it said that we require his prior consent? We may arrange an Eruv on his behalf with his consent or without his consent. For we may benefit a person in his absence, Shiloh Befono. You can benefit some, someone even if he's not around, right? You pronounce the, the winner of the lotto even if he's not there. You pronounce that, that this number won. Right, the number won. Yeah. Every day. So even though Shiloh Befono is not there. Doesn't have to be there, but this is the number right. that you want. You, don't you can say, you can say now I'm giving a gift to my brother. He's not around right now, but you zochinlo, you put aside a gift for him. Right. So. But and and but and on the other hand, if chovin we may not disadvantage a person except in his presence, and with his consent. So Eruv Etchumim has an element of disadvantage, and thus requires his consent. Unlike Eruv Chatzot, which is an, an, an unqualified advantage to the person for whom it is made, and thus does not require his explicit consent. That's why the rabbi can, can do the Eruv Chatzot for everyone without them even noticing. Right. But on the other hand, in Chovim, when it comes to Eruv Etchumim, there is something that he is... Uh, 
and it's a no because it's his food. From this we see, laws of Urchatzeus are treated differently from the laws of Urchatzeus. Avashi Omar, it's the Rikhir, it's the Rikhir, it was necessary to state that the law of Azal Birch of Enuru, in addition to stating that the law of Azal in Yavin, we in in a question. Sal Kadaita Hamina Animil Bishur Eru, Avad Betchila Seru Vema Loi. It might have occurred to you to say that this is so that the law follows the lenient opinion in Eru. In Eru questions only when it concerns the remainders of an Eru. What does number 6 say about this? Abba B'shir Seu V'malor. Where food was set aside to serve as an Eru for many, for many weeks, and it was partially eaten after the Eru has already taken effect. Beginning of the first Shabbos, the Eru remained valid, a dispute involving the validity of the remains of an Eruv, either Chatzeros or Tuchumin, would follow the rule that Eruv laws are decided leniently. But in the, in, the, in, the, in dispute involving the beginning of an Eruv, I might say that the law does not follow the lenient opinion. It was therefore necessary for Yeshua ben Levi to say that the law follows of Yerucho Benu in our Mishnah, which deals with a situation resembling the beginning of an Eruv. In Rabbi Yerucho Benu's case, there was no prior Eruv, therefore the question whether a sleeping person acquires a residence by his presence is a kind to a dispute about the validity, akin. is akin to a dispute about the validity of the beginnings of an Eruv. From where did you take it? From where do you see we differentiate between the remainders of an Eruv and the beginning of an Eruv? That not. We learned in a mission. When is this said that there is a minimum quantity of food for an Eruv? For the beginning of an Eruv, but the remainders of an Eruv, even a minute amount, suffices to maintain the validity of the Eruv. And they required an Eruv for Chatseris. Only so as not to cause the children to forget the law of Eruv. So they required a minimum quantity for Eruv HaTzeros, only to ensure that children growing up would not forget the law of Eruv. The primary requirement of a minimum is in the case of Eruv HaTchumen, and it was to safeguard this law that the rabbis required a minimum in the case of Eruv HaTzeros as well. However, since a minimum is not really necessary for Ruvah Hatzeros, the rule requiring it is waived once the Eruv has taken effect. It is to such cases that we see that we would have restricted the rule that says to follow the lenient opinion. To prevent such a conclusion, it was explicitly stated that the law follows Abiyur HaVinur in our Mishnah, which resembles the beginning of an Eruv. In Elizabeth, they did the opposite. Once a year, they would stop the error so that people would know what it is not to carry. Wow. I propose to the discussion of general rules of whom follow, whom to follow in Eru disputes. We follow Rabbi Yecho Benuri. Who do we follow? Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Zrika, Amru, Alochak, Rabbi Akiva, Mechavero. Alochak follows Rabbi Akiva against a colleague of his, and there is only one other sage disputing him. And it follows Rabbi Yaisi against his colleagues. 
even when there is more than one disputing him. And it follows Rabbi against a colleague of his. So to what practical effect are these ruled are these rules said? May one actually decide cases based upon these general rules. Ravasi Omar Halocho Rabihia Bar Abu Omar Matin. Abasi said these general rules are halacha, and the law is in practice decided by them. And Rabbi Chia Bar Abba said, we incline towards the, these general rules. Individual cases may be decided according to these rules, but we do not state publicly that all cases may, may be so decided without any further analysis. Rabbi Yesi Bar Hanina Omar Nirin. Rabbi Yesi Bar Hanina said, they, these rules appear indicated, but they are not definitive. No case may be decided solely upon these rules. The Gemara discusses another group of general rules. In a dispute between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudah, Allah follows Rabbi Yudah. In, in case where there is a dispute between Rabbi Yud and Rabbi Yaisi, Allah follows Rabbi Yaisi. And there's needless to say that if Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yaisi dispute each other, Allah follows Rabbi Yaisi. Because in the case of Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudah, Allah follows Rabbi Yudah. In the case of Rabbi Yud and Rabbi Yaisi, Allah follows Rabbi Yaisi. So obviously in the case of Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yaisi, Allah would follow Rabbi Yaisi. For if even against Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir's view does not prevail, Mokim Rabbi Yossi, but you don't have to tell me, in the case of Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda, or in the case of Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Meir, the halacha would follow Rabbi Yossi. It's like if you, if you think of it in terms of, uh, of champions, okay? Right. So if you say that uh, champion A wins champion B, right. okay? And champion B wins champion C, right. okay? So I don't need to tell you that champion A would win champion C. Right. If champion A wins champion B, obviously he would win champion C. So in the first Machlekes is between, you have uh, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Uda. So, yeah, so Rabbi Uda. Second Machlekes is Rabbi Uda and Rabbi Yaisi. So, obviously, when it comes to Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yaisi, that Rabbi Yaisi would win. It's funny, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Meir never wins, but he's like the greatest Tana there was. <laughs> Not never, but... Yeah. But virtually, he, in the majority of cases, he's always not. They say Stam Mishnah is Rabbi Meir. Most, right. most, most Stam Mishnah, meaning the anonymous Mishnah is right. If you have If even against Rabbi Yehuda, the view does not prevail, then against Rabbi Yehuda, whose opinion outweighs Rabbi Yehuda as well. There's no question that Rabbi Shimon's view does not prevail. The battle of Meir, Rabbi Shimon, my take, who so they inquired, is a machloket between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Shimon, what, would, uh, what rule would it be? And the Gemara says, take away, let it stand, we're not sure if Rabbi Meir uh, debate. See, not every time, like, like yeah. Rabbi Meir over here stands its ground. Amar Rabbi Shashar, listen to Lana Kloli. These rules, or establishing a law are not valid. Rather, each case must be decided on its particular merits. From where does Rav Mishashaya know this? From that which we learned in our Mishnah. To what is this case of Tehum? Law comparable. The three chatseros which open to one another. 
of Sukhas Rishu Sarabim and also open to Rishu Sarabim. The residents of each Chatzar made an Eruv to allow carrying from the houses into three Chatzeros to allow carrying from a, from a house in one Chatzar into the other two Chatzeros. If the two outer Chatzeros each joined in an Eruv the middle chotzer, he would tell Simon. The middle chotzer is permitted with them. The outer chotzer is vain. Would tell Simon. They, the residents of the outer chotzer, are permitted with it to carry from the houses to the middle chotzer. Shtamachit says so zeim zu, but the two outer chotzer are prohibited with each other to carry from a house in one outer chotzer through the middle chotzer and into the other outer chotzer. Rabbi Shimon. Uman Poligale, who disputes Rabbi Shimon? Rabbi Uda. Ha, Omar, Rabbi Uda, Rishon, Loch Kabud, but you said when Rabbi Shimon argues with Rabbi Uda, Allah follows Rabbi Uda. El Allah, Shmamin, a listener, whether we do not understand from this ruling of Rav that these rules are not accepted. My Kusha, Dilma, hey, Hadis, Maris, perhaps where it was said explicitly that Allah follows a certain opinion, it was said. And we follow that determination of the halacha rather than general rules. Echad ela yismo ela yismo, but whether there's nothing was said about whom the halacha should follow, nothing was said, and we follow the general rules to determine the halacha. So it's not all the time. The general rules only kicks in where it doesn't say who the halacha follows. If the, the Gemara tells you you have Rabbi Shimon and you have Rabbi Yudah, for example, disputing each other, and it doesn't say who the Allah will follow, then you would follow Rabbi Yudah. But if it says Allah follows Rabbi Shimon, that's it. If a private town became public, in a school, or it's like somebody made his house a museum. Okay. So now a private place became uh, a private became public. No, in a school, or we may. Well, how about a gated neighborhood that became not, not gated? I don't know. It could happen. Yeah, but let's say you have a, a neighborhood or place where there was no neighbors, just a house, and there's lots of land around it. True. And a guy lived by himself and decided to donate the house to make it, okay, make it museum. whatever. So that's I just I was thinking about an example of a private town becomes public. Melvin the school we may join the entire town in an eruv. Shall Rabbi Yochid, but if a public town becomes private, and Melvin the school we may not join the entire town in an eruv. Elam unless one sets aside an area outside the eruv. Kir chadosha shibuda shesh b'chamishin diurin. That is equivalent in size to the town of Chadosha in Yehuda, which has 50 inhabitants. Div Rabbi Uda, these are the words of Rabbi Uda. Rabbi Shimon says, Sholesh Chatzeros Shnebotim, it is sufficient to set aside three Chatzeros containing two dwellings. Okay, so you've got six houses in each one, and two have a Chatzer. Well, he starts off with saying that Chamishim uh, Diurin, this is equivalent in the size of a town of 50 inhabitants. Chamor B'Shimon says, it is sufficient to set aside three Chatzeros containing two dwellings. So, so giving you a case where you have a machlekes between the two. I guess to the, to the open space we would probably finish it from. Yeah, if you, if you see number 19, it's a little long, but he explains the whole thing about shitufe mevoyers of uh, making a sheet of creating a, a connection. Right, so he writes... She, uh, this is occasionally referred to an Eruv. The Mishnah appears in 
59a, according to most Rishonim, the term private town means a town that is privately owned. However, Rashi interprets this to mean a town to which less than 600,000 people have access, since there are less people than are recorded in the Torah as having been in Israelite camp in the desert. This area does not qualify as a Shusorabim. For the Torah prohibition of carrying on the Shabbos, a public town according to so that's that's a so really if for example Boca has less than six hundred thousand people it has the term of a private town. Private town. Town privately owned. By us is a little bit more challenging because if you're in West Boca, West Boca is a different town than Boca. A different Boca. town, and therefore, from the I don't know from I I you say I suggest from the. Uh, Anyhow, but we'll touch it. Uh, we'll yeah. touch this. Uh, yeah. Continue with the subject tomorrow. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see.